Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Today is January, February, March, January, February, yeah, March uh, 24th, Wednesday. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm doing something slightly different as I was scheduling videos yesterday. So going forward on my channel, and I'm, I'll be looking for feedback on this i'm gonna set everything i schedule for a while to premieres for the very first episode in a new pre-recorded series what this means is that people subscribe to my youtube channel of which there's uh very there's less than 500 i believe and i need a thousand really desperately um they will get notifications on the subscription tab assuming they are looking on their subscription tab which youtube does not really push people to to do that anyways um they, they'll get notifications where they can set reminders for the first episode in a series and that will be like months and months ahead of when it actually happens all right so we've got this new cards which makes me feel like I potentially wasted some cards somewhere like interesting that this is what is happening now I thought we were ready for a new expansion hmm so I can buy a bunch of packs here certainly and it, it would make sense to buy at least this pack right now with this um but it feels like i have packs for an upcoming expansion and they're they're just taking their sweet time on that matter hmm yeah that doesn't really make sense one bit we can buy this too because there's really no reason not to buy it so yeah I, I imagine people might find the premieres annoying like I I'm far too pessimistic on YouTube to think that this is magically gonna start getting more people to watch uh, pre-recorded footage which is really the bread and butter of uh, what I want this YouTube channel to be about I'm gonna do two packs of this. Um, there is a YouTuber that that came on and put on a special video saying how live streams basically ruined his channel because live streams don't have the same watch time and they're super long, so the percentage of of adherence or watch time is just so incredibly low, and that. That's why you have a decent amount, or pretty much all the big YouTubers will live stream on Twitch and only put curated, edited footage on YouTube. I'm in a weird position, certainly, though, where at least for the past couple of weeks, I've been seeing more and more subscribers show up through live streams. Um, not that I've seen a major increase of engagement on live streams or even views on live streams. So I don't know if it has, if it, it's really something that is going to focus or affect me. Interesting. There's a daily deal apparently for everything except for the thousand crystals to get this. Yeah. If I was really concerned, I would probably stream on Twitch, and uh, I could do that, certainly. It, it would be totally doable to switch over to Twitch and have only pre-recorded footage show up on YouTube. I would, I would need some feedback to see if people actually enjoyed that or not. Um, logically, it would almost make more sense to to just stream on both but there's just so much shenanigans as it were with the algorithm and craziness with the algorithm anyways 
So let's go here and just see what cards are we missing with the most recent expansion if they just put out new cards. Missing one there. Nothing here. Hmm. One here. This is a top tier card too. We're probably missing duplicates of cards. We're missing one here. Hmm. Logically, it would make sense to buy several packs of this new expansion while it's going on. Because the new expansion cards kind of go away. Let's see. Yeah. As I was doing scheduling, there's uh, also a factor, certainly, that I, I've put that off quite a bit. And there there is probably less footage created than I would like to. Like, yeah, I really don't feel like I could blame anybody else besides myself is I've just been slower and slower and more and more distracted and and I've just never really gotten ahead as far as I would like to be Let's see new leaders on sale new add-ons new story new leader interesting is there a new story that I missed nope Let's see some of these banner advertisements are incredibly old and they don't go away once you've done things. I wonder if you bought the battle pass if that would actually get rid of that banner. Okay, so. I should buy. Some packs here. Let's go with five packs. That should be enough to. Hopefully get us everything we want. At least one of everything we want. And see, it would be very weird if like next week they came out with a, a true new card expansion with a whole new set of cards. If anything, it kind of feels like their Shadowverse is just slow. I've also played a lot of visual novels, so there, there is going to be basically two visual novels back to back with very little, maybe I can squeeze a, a series or two in between that, but like between Virtue's Last Reward and Danganronpa, there, there is going to be in that early time slot just visual novel after visual novel and that probably won't get very many views in on top of being super long series and yeah you know, i've almost certainly shot myself in the foot with that one i am still playing like the pinball arcade which it's going all right. I'm almost up to 90. Uh, the 90s tables. But a lot of it does certainly highlight a factor of how I would very much prefer all of those tables to be in Pinball FX3. Because I am still seeing some major problems, major glitches with what is being... Um, I have to put it in create mode, actually. Um... So we didn't get that one, Frig. We didn't get that one. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. Which I think means I probably should buy another five packs. While we can. If anything, there might be an argument to 
straight up just buying 50 packs with these cards. Of course, this also might be a case where you just aren't going to get the cards. Like, ideally what you would want to be in is in a scenario where you wouldn't have to get up to the tradables to get all the cards, but kind of seems like you do. Let's run some numbers here. 167 packs have been opened on this, and I don't have all the tradables. If I was to do another 50, that would get me as far as that. Whereas this one still needs a massive amount of cards if we're going to get to the tradables. And we need to get to the tradables first and foremost before we can figure out anything else. So I think it probably is smarter to open a bunch of packs here. But I want to wait until we have a real new expansion happen. So I'm going to wait on that. Maybe for a month. We're looking for Dragoncraft or Bloodcraft in this stage 2. There, I, one of the tables I played on Pinball Arcade is called Earthshaker, which is the, which is a pinball table that basically has something like a paint shaker built into it and shakes the table automatically, um, instead of the player nudging it. And the original, like, 200 units of that table had a sinking building that would sink down into the table as an earthquake occurred and they didn't simulate that like the, the building still exists in the rest of the like 1800 units that were made uh, but it would have been really really easy for pinball arcade to simulate the the rare table which that's what you would expect somebody to do if they're making digital versions of uh, tables, it would be super easy, frankly, to have both versions or have it turn on and turn off. This isn't the first time I've seen what could have easily just been a different skin or a different version of a table that would have uh, been appreciated. Uh, it, it just feels like Pinball Arcade efforts maybe we're just too focused on the kickstarting and the funding um if it is really a case that pinball arcade is the equivalent of a kickstarter game where it, it over uh, promises and under delivers i guess then i've uh, i should consider myself lucky because they did deliver on the tables it's just very often glitchy sometimes laggy um often confusing, often very difficult to look at the tables and know what's going on. And then there, there are definitely some tables that are just not great in general. I wouldn't say Earthshaker is particularly a great table. It has too much going on, too much Time to get started. visuals. Uh, um, who might you be? Then there was a Ghostbusters clone before that that was pretty awful. Um, called Bone Busters, which wouldn't have been saved if it had been really licensed uh, to be a Ghostbusters pinball table. Um, but before that, there were several good tables, and so I, uh, after playing like Black Knight 2000, there was four remaining 1980 tables that I, I have, and I said, well, if even one or two of those are good, I'll be satisfied. And that's pretty much how I think it's going to uh, go. Uh, Alright, well. Last stream. I'll try not 
last stream we, we managed not to go super long and so I, I'd like to try and emulate that today so we'll just go through the video game news um, I also changed my OBS settings a little bit so it will just try and grab the Chrome window instead of whatever is on the second display that way if things get messed up and moved around as the windows are getting moved around as I unplug one monitor and, and use a video switcher on another monitor let's see well See what this does. Verifying access. Okay. Uh, uh. Destiny Child the Lewd Mobile Cell Phone Game it is almost done with its Ragnar break. I have five more hours on it and I'm trying to get all of the raids done so that I can get enough currency to to get a free five star star pool ticket which yeah i've gotten very far in the gotcha elements there where where it is working fairly well i'll try not to obliterate Do that do that and suppose what you would want to do is you would want to just start evolving this guy guess I can make a little effort because now he'll be at a higher attack and then I can play him and have him at a higher attack interesting I I installed a plug-in to make left clicks on Chrome just open pages in the background that saves me a lot of right clicking on the mouse to, to open tabs in a new window which is what I've just been doing it is a, a kind of great indication of how I've just been stuck with my old ways and not really uh, improving let's see What happened there? Oh, well. I guess we need our necromancy uh, increased. I guess we play this. And... Hmm. I didn't realize that I had needed to do that. Alright, well. I thought this was just going to get bigger and bigger, but... It isn't, so... We'll get two of these fairly quickly. Guess I can make a little effort. Oh, it doesn't actually change this attack. Why, why did that not... Did that not increase? Hmm. What what is about forbidden strength? The resplendent phoenix graces you with her strength. Consecutive normal punches. Let the land be graced by beauty. Hmm. Well, I'm confused as to why this isn't a three three. Hmm. Um, yeah, is there anything else I did? No. Uh, I am noticing, though, that I, I do have too many, too many plates. I'm trying to keep spinning, certainly, as, like, doing, like, 
experiments with a circuit playground express that I got is is just yet another thing when I still haven't gotten my server to work. I really worked on it at all while the internet still seems to potentially have some trouble. Although good news is for at least the past four or five days the internet hasn't been hasn't had any trouble as far as my internet service provider. Uh, but also I have like plenty of Lego to do and plenty of like organizing and decorating of Lego sets I've already built that I've not even really tried to do. I definitely need to do some spring cleaning. I have a bookshelf that I need to build as far as the Lego um, being displayed. There's just a lot going on, certainly, and, and it feels like I would probably do well to to think about um, Yeah, think about abandoning something in, in favor of something else. Attack with that one? Nope. So yeah, I need to schedule videos, record videos, and several other things. Just need to get more on the ball. Need to. Uh, this is part of the problem of insomnia, and perhaps just part of a problem of being being overly ambitious and and underly organized or disorganized. It's, um. Although, in all fairness. Like, being a YouTuber who could kind of set their own hours and do whatever they want, uh, did, has not, well, I would say it has helped a lot more than, than it sounds like it would, because there definitely were cases back in, uh, when I was working for other people, where the entirety of years were just sucked up and used by working for other people and and you would work eight ten uh, eight to ten hours a day and be so physically exhausted and mentally and, and emotionally drained that all you could do is maybe eat eat a quick dinner and fall asleep uh, at least as a youtuber i'm doing the things i want to do and at the end of the day doing either one accomplishes pretty much nothing which Sadly, is a statement just for the real world, and and particularly in the United States, is very few people are ever going to accomplish anything that anybody else would agree is grand. Um, there will certainly be people that say having over probably about eight thousand videos on YouTube is a grand accomplishment, um, but then there are also plenty of people that would dismiss that as as nothing of importance at all. I could and probably should have just played a fleeting joy there. Born of the sea, return to the sea. Okay, I have a forbidden art. Which if I could get the necromancy up to twenty I could deal two damage. But it's Nicola Forbidden Strength. Hmm. Seems to have done something weird. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Hmm. See, I sh totally should have played a fleeting joy. Okay, what can we do now? Strike. Plus one, plus one in Storm. Rush. 
Probably it's not a bad idea to put that on the field. And... Probably should play that. And go ahead and hit that. Okay. That. And then hit that. Shutting down. Enemy identified. Hit that. Play that. I'll try not to obliterate you. Okay, this one's all <laughs> I can make a little effort. Oh. Hit that. You gotta hurry. Should have moved far too slow there. Hmm. Behold the fists of immortal supremacy. I lost. You're tough. All right. Well, I got wrecked there. Man, I'm moving slow. And I really don't even have an excuse today. Like, I, I kind of just woke up. Like, uh, that, that is part of the problem still, though, is that for a brief second there, I felt like I was waking up at, like, 6 in the morning, like a normal person, or, uh, well, I don't know if that's a smart thing, but I, I, I would like to wake up at, like, 10 in the morning and, and potentially uh, start the process of getting prepared to do pre-recordings or live stream. Anyways, let's let's go through the video game news. Rec Room here has raised a hundred million dollars in funding uh, at a one point two five billion dollar valuation. I don't like when they put the dollar sign if they're talking in billions. Um, I suppose that's accurate, but I, I feel like you should probably put a big B next to it. But then I might think might. Um, okay, that's a Gamma Sutra article. I don't know if there's anything more I want to say around that. Hmm. Let's see. Um, Magic the Gathering, I guess would also be Hasbro, has acquired the Balloons developer Ninja Kiwi for one point. $141.8 million which yeah it seems kind of ridic ridiculous if you think about it though for Magic the Gathering to acquire a mobile developer which I assume Balloons is mostly a um, a mobile game first and foremost um it, it, like, you would think they would want to acquire them before they eat, came out with Magic Arena in the first place, let alone uh, wait until after they had already made their mobile arena um, uh, game. Because it, it kind of feels like Ninja Kiwi would definitely be just acquired to have talent to improve on the mobile platform. Uh, by the way, I believe Hearthstone is launching kind of a big update at the moment. And there was a big giveaway on Reddit. But I'm not really paying much attention to it. And I really couldn't see myself going back to playing Hearthstone when you have all these stories of Activision Blizzard just falling apart even worse than it was two or three years ago. Um them potentially unnerving cards, which is how I heard it described, feels feels like it would be something of interest, but also kind of a ridiculous um, backstep. And if they unnerf cards today, it feels like tomorrow they might nerf them again. Now, I can say Destiny Child did partner with 
a different company to make a clash kind of a tower defense clash royale type game uh, called defense wars destiny child defense wars um, i wonder if that is what they are acquiring balloons for um and i would need your qe for us to take the potential characters uh, like planeswalkers and turn them into a tower defense game and then promote the same characters even if you are um, not particularly uh, even if you're not particularly like interested in playing magic the gathering they, they still probably want those planeswalkers and the dungeons and dragons storyline to be well known it would be confusing to say the least if if they acquired them did not use their talent to improve something else and just kept having them make balloons tower defense style games well i guess this is the ultimate defense against that isn't it Let's see this would evolve it. This would do nothing. This would do nothing. I don't know if we have anything at all that helps. So, let's do this, I suppose. Watch out. And probably should have evolved something and attacked from there but whatever hmm. we have a game on steam here called presidium which looks like it's probably a platforming jumping game it's color palettes not something that I particularly appreciate and the buildings don't look particularly detailed it's early access free English only so once again I it's one of those games where I just don't know what I am uh, what I am supposed to think there is like how can you make money on that how can you how can you even afford to keep it listed Um, here we have a game called A Hundred Hidden Mushrooms. Because I'm doing window capture now, uh, it highlights the chrome window with a yellow outline. I don't know if that's something OBS is doing or if that's something just chrome is doing. Uh, this is the exact same couple of pictures it looks like, but I guess they didn't want to spoil it. Or maybe there are only a few pictures. Uh, we've seen far too many of these hundred hidden object games, but they're cheap. So, I mean, if you want nine games for less than nine dollars, English only, this might be something of interest. But I have a hard, hard time really justifying that. All right, so I think you do this to save you, and then you do this. And then, hmm. probably evolve this. And then hit. See, and if I hit that, though. These are clashes, which are would reduce it as an interesting sound effect alpha drive well, let's take alpha drive what's that do hmm so if I if this one gets killed and all the le rest get left alone I could put a Nether Machina Machina card on the field.
Here we have a game on Steam called P.S. or P. Sweat, I guess is what the I pronounce that. This looks like nothing. It's tagged as a visual novel. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. Seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. Nothing interesting there. It seems like my new suspender extension, and it, it really sucks that I've, I've had to go through like five different suspender extensions here um, to figure this out. What does this do? Lich and Zombie. Draw two cards, restore two defense to your leader. Um, I guess put this on the field. Evolve. Hmm. I needed something to die. What I needed something to have happen there. Here we have uh, Pure Pure Tetris 2 on Steam, which is already rated very positively. Uh, this is from Sega, and it probably is an interesting thought as far as how many Tetris games are available on Steam. I don't know how many Tetris games really matter that people really want to play, but at least Pure Pure Tetris changes things up a little bit. Um, $29.99 is a high price, certainly. So that, that is something to consider. Hmm. Let's see, if we were just to look up the word Tetris, I think you probably would find a decent number of things. Like Pio Pio Tetris 1 is on Steam and then Tricky Towers. And then Pio Pio Champions. One Figure Death Punch is not a Tetris game. Yeah, you kind of quickly start running out of games that actually have Tetris in the name and at least have different ideas. It's a little expensive though, certainly. And yeah, Tricky Towers is a Tetris, but it's, I think, a physics-based Tetris game where the Tetrises don't actually line up in a grid. Hmm. So yeah, I would say you probably don't need as many Tetris games as you would think. Uh, because I just don't think that many people would really care to play them. And if I wanted to play Tetris, which is kind of a big if, I feel like I'd play it either emulating the NES version or the Game Boy version of Tetris, probably the NES version, um, and I would, and or I would play it on some kind of really small keychain game where it would make a lot more sense to to not go any further down that route and and not not have a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar PC uh, playing a incredibly simplistic game in the same way that I really wouldn't see myself playing Pong on Steam either, Not unless they changed it quite a bit and Pure Pure Tetris Two. Might be the closest you're going to get as far as major improvements to Tetris. I did want to mention that I certainly lucked out building a new computer. Um, accidentally buying a 2080 when a 2080 was uh, brand new. Uh, accidentally buying that because my power supply burned out and I thought it was my graphics card that was a problem. Um, and then after that just building a whole new computer um, I right now the 
chip shortage for computer components seems to be something that is going to continue for maybe two or three years, unfortunately. And it's not just because crypto miners are buying graphics cards or anything like that. It has to do a lot with just the pandemic and people needing new computers. Uh, over the course of the last four to ten years, I imagine a lot of people had migrated most of their day-to-day -day work to cell phones and iPhones, and they let whatever laptops, whatever home PCs they had get very old and very stagnant, and they probably didn't notice, uh, didn't use it enough to notice that that it was time for an upgrade um, but once the pandemic hit and everybody was trying to do their work at home all of a sudden that became a much big bigger consideration and so people are just buying computers in general any any computer they can get so i'm very glad for that um, that being said, there still are some computer components I would like to build, and there definitely are some people, I imagine, that, that if they if they realized they wanted a computer and could afford one, would ask me to help them build one. Hmm. And I, I don't know what I'd really tell somebody at this point if if they said they wanted the new computers i i would say well all right we're gonna have to work very hard to you're gonna probably have to get a intermediary um graphics card you're probably gonna get something fairly low and i don't know if any of the other components are gonna be any easier to collect or get hmm. Now would be the time to save your money, wait for sales. Um, you're probably safe if you could get a um, a sale for a power supply, although having a power supply potentially sit around for a year or two and not being plugged in might be a problem. I've, I'm not sure if that would break it or not. It might, it might dry out the capacitors just sitting on the shelf, although probably not since it probably since I'm sure power supplies sit on shelves in stores for years. Hmm. Okay, fuse. Hmm. Let's see. Evolve this, although I should have evolved the bat and attacked with the mat, actually. That would have made more sense. Since that's not a Machina card. Yeah. You could get cases. There's there's probably not a good argument that an ATX, micro ATX, mini ATX case would be incompatible. Uh, you could get probably power supplies, but once you start talking about RAM, video cards, CPUs, um, all of those are going to pretty much immediately run out of value the second that they they roll off the lot, much like cars. So you, you would have to just buy, bite the bullet. I don't know or think think that a pre-built system is is going to change the equation much um that there might be some a decent sale out there to get a pre-built computer that um might be sitting on the shelves but i don't think so hmm. Hmm. Your, your best bet would be i imagine to go a little bit crazier 
and look for uh, auctions of defunct or nearly defunct companies that are trying to sell their equipment. Like, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if you found lots of restaurants. If you looked really hard, you could find restaurants that that would um, be selling whatever accounting laptop or computer that they they would have. Oh, how are you? We can hit that, I suppose. We can refill, heal that, I suppose. Anyways, moving on, we have a game on Steam called Faction Wars, which looks like it is just a placement RPG, turn-based tactics. It doesn't seem like there's much of a game other than that, though, so... Uh, it's a dollar ninety nine English full audio. It does have like slight different variations on the looks of the characters, but I'm not really seeing any major changes in stats being highlighted. Hmm. Yeah, so it just seems like it's a simplistic concept that fails on that idea. Yeah, we have a game on Steam called Book of the Old, which is. Tagged as a bullet hell action roguelike. It looks like, it, to me, it's a top-down twin-stick shooter. And it looks like it's a Chinese game. $9.99. English and Chinese languages. Looks just kind of plug and all. Haven't been watching any of these trailers, which is probably a good idea. Yeah. It just doesn't really feel like there could be anything that special about a game like that. I randomly put four different marker followers from your deck into play. Alright. See how that works. And then... Apparently I can't evolve anything. So... Hit that. And then hit that. And then attack with that. I could do 10 damage if I can just kill this a bunch of times. Hmm. Next we have a game on Steam called Sleep Tight, which is obviously a horror game. Although I would say these monsters actually look pretty nicely designed. It's like a VR survival horror game hmm. see the, the problem with this is while this looks amazingly well visually polished is it is a VR game so I just don't know how many people would really want to to do something like this and and psychologically potentially damage themselves 1499 English full audio I'm going to put this on the fall list. Fast-paced action horror game. Survive waves of monsters if you can. Upgrade different weapons to help you. Remember, pay attention. Listen closely and don't let them get you. I'll try not to obliterate you completely. There we go. And then we play that. Try not to obliterate you completely. Alright, so I can do Forbidden Art and deal 2 damage right now. If I can. Hmm. Potentially. Attack here. Here. And here. Hmm. That's probably the first horror game on VR, though, that actually looks like it's been they've put some effort into it unfortunately then we have a game here called I evolution of Zhang Hu which looks like a Chinese RPG game of no real interest far too much text I don't know 
like how the Asians could really fix a lot of their games when they have so much dialogue and text that I don't know how you translate something like that. Six dollars and fifty nine cents Chinese only. Um Hmm. I have considerably few games to tabs open. I don't get what is going on with that. It, either there, there just aren't a lot of games coming out on Steam, which might be the case. Or my duplicate closer is closing some duplicates, but not all duplicates. Like, some suspended tabs, but not all suspended tabs. Uh, if anything, I think it's just as we, we have hit a whole level of slowness. Uh, like, I literally may be just barely done with this uh, this Grand Prix two, 2 Tactics game, and we may be done with all the news. Uh, here we have a game called Ur Elemental Angel, which is just a shoot 'em up game with an anime girl thrown in for no reason. Early access 359, whole bunch of languages. Nothing there of interest. Right. Get rid of that one card. Here we have a game called The Cat in Dungeons. Which looks like it's just a puzzle game. For a dollar twenty nine cents, English only. Jeez, if if I ran out of news, I don't know what to really do. Like how do how does the live stream all of a sudden change when there's no video game news to talk about? It, it's just playing the card game, and I suppose that means we could probably focus on maybe a deck rebuild. Or two or three, and it would give me some extra time. Um, or I could just end the stream at like an hour long, which might also help with YouTube uh, analytics. If that's what what I would care about, I'm not sure that's really what I would care about. Here we have a game called Mini Racer. I almost wonder if maybe I should just play a different game. Like, at a certain point, if I just live streamed all the pre recorded footage, it, it would be so random though. Live streams would start at, at like 2 or 3 in the morning. Mini Racer is 59 cents and a bunch of languages. Yeah, I don't think there's enough there. Okay. Put that and that and that. This card and this card work fairly nicely together because he has always one health and this one will always do some level of damage. That. I'll try not to obliterate you completely. And then what else we kinda need to do something. Go! Go! <laughs> Guess I can make a little effort. Play that too. Next, we have a game on Steam called Speeding Road, which is just an infinite driver game. 59 cents, bunch of languages. Clearly, some of these game developers just click every checkbox. It would be interesting if, if Steam forced them to actually name every language they're a game supported but it would also be very easy to go look up a list of every language and 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 have that list ready to go 
this one. And then that one. Hmm. And then hit that. And hit that. And then the turn. Here we have a game called Audio Drive. Experience your favorite music by driving through an environment that's affected by the audio. Um, yeah, this doesn't look like something that that concept almost makes sense. And what's interesting is it seems like you can flip it, whether the steering wheels on one side or the other, which is nice. It's a VR game, but it, it looks like you're just driving in the rain always. And it looks like there's maybe just these glowing lines that you're, I guess, trying to, to hit. Hmm. There, there might be a concept around this that would work. They've just really failed to implement it here. And at a certain point, it, this almost feels like it would encourage somebody to get into a real car and start driving in an inspired way by the audio, which could be very dangerous. I know I once had a um, truck that would turn up the audio depending on how fast you were going and I fairly quickly recognized that I was actually speeding uh, unintentionally because I was trying to get the audio to turn up and that's not a, a smart move by any means hmm. I'll try not to obliterate you Yeah, that we want to evolve. I need to get to 20 to deal 10 damage on the Forbidden Art. So yeah, I, I had to turn off that feature on that truck because that, that, was, that was dangerous and it was actually quite a hassle because it was an old enough car that to turn off any real features you, you had to turn the key in a certain mechanism to get the the, the truck into like a programming mode it, it didn't have a touch screen or anything um, My only desire. and it, it's the kind of thing you wouldn't even probably have realized you could do without looking it up in the manual here we have a game on Steam called Rival Rampage, which looks like it's a GTA 1 clone, which it doesn't look terrible for being a GTA 1 clone. It's just the problem is I'm not sure you'd even want to play GTA 1. It's free to play with online co-op only English. I could see maybe an idea there, but you, I don't know if there'd be enough of an audience to actually play against people. Here we have a game on Steam called Allen, which looks like nothing. Looks like it's a top-down, I guess, dungeon crawler is what it's tagged as? Uh, I cannot tell. $2.99 English only. It's being compared to Torchlight. Right. Can we do... We could get an evolution point. Gain Storm, Rush, hmm. let's see, Alpha Drive, not ready for that, okay, well, we can do this, I think, better than anybody else. And then I'll try not to obliterate you completely. Hmm. Let's go ahead and play fleeing joy. Hit that. Hmm. If I could get two of these, I could potentially um, 
I could potentially win next turn. I don't know how I could get two of these, though. I'd have to recover an evolution point and then play this again, which I think I could pull that off. Shutting down. Hmm. Yeah, we have a game on Steam here called Easy Quiz, which I didn't curate anything, clearly, if I have a game called Easy Quiz on Steam. It's English only. They want 89 cents. Obviously, no to that. And then, like, the last tab I have open, for one reason or another, is this game called Couch Monsters, which... Just looks like it is a co-op puzzle solving game. I will say the visuals look pretty good, but I'm not sure there's like anything here that I could play single player. $10.04, it says single player. I kind of question that. I'm gonna put this on the fall list. So what, what's occurring to me is maybe I opened a bunch of tabs yesterday or the day before after streaming and at that point i i took my eyes off the computer and when i took my eyes off the computer it suspended slash closed all those tabs okay Okay. Will this work? No. It won't. Because I need I would need twenty in general. I have two Forbidden Arts, but I would need to do enough damage. Otherwise, because this is Necromancy 20, it's not just, it's not just if you have 20 shadows, do something. Okay, can we win here? Is this the right move? Do this. Do this. Hmm. Do this. This. You I mean, this will give me a repair mode, but that won't do anything else. Nope, I lost. Do you have, like, yeah, where'd all my other tabs go? Yeah, everything closed. It has to have. Because I'm, I'm missing tons of tabs here. Hmm. Yeah, that... Definitely is what happened.
Okay, so we've still got... We're going to have to rebuild this. And I'm going to have to reload a whole bunch of, of backups and... Honestly, at a certain point, I think I just probably need to disable the duplicate tab thing. Because it is just not working. Yeah, I, I just don't know how to really fix that. I don't know if it's worth mentioning, like, what's on sale. I did hear, hear that there is, like, a Half-Life Alex uh, mod out there to put some other game into it. Game of the Year edition of Witcher 3 for $9.99. I haven't bought a game in, a, in several months. Borderlands 3 Super Deluxe Edition for $35.99. I don't know if there's a great argument to buy any games at the moment. There's a Square Enix sale up to 90% off, which maybe that would help some people. Although I bet the things that are 90% off are also things that you might already own. Um, while I was looking up and scheduling um, The Walking Dead, the final season, I actually had to go back and look at the third season, The New Frontier, and yeah, that she looks like a completely different character at the end of The New Frontier than, than Clementine, the way Clementine looks at the um, at the beginning of the final season. And, and they kind of clearly redconned a lot of that. Uh, Steam has a blog for the top releases of February, so I guess I have to click here. Um, I'm signed in, so we should see in the adult content that there was some weirdness last month where an adult game should have been in the top 10 sales, I feel, and was specifically left out. I don't, never really got a clear understanding if that was because I wasn't logged in at the time on Steam and it was hiding adult content, or if it was because this was just a global decision of Valve. Uh, here we have one called Hellish Quartet. Here we have the room for Old Sins. Is this actually non-VR? What's this game? Firework. Well, that is not an effective way to look at a tab. So we'll just open things in new tabs. Although, I don't even know if I really needed need to. I can just left click them instead of right clicking. Uh, I'm still training myself. Figure that out. Honey Pop 2. Clearly a game that would have been a big seller in February. And so 
you can see they're not hiding that one and uh, interestingly here they they've kind of changed how this page works there's nothing here that highlights the fact that this is an adult game whereas I feel like you probably could have ESRB ratings or something when available um, Curse of the Dead Gods I probably have a lot of these already on my follow list or wish list 38 XX Rogue Rogue Heroes Ru Ruins of Tessos League of Maidens this is the mixed reviewed not very well received game but this also goes to highlight how if you make a Marvel game uh, a Marvel looking game with a bunch of uh, big busty girls you will get a lot of people's attention um, that's basically what it is, is it's female superheroes. And then War at Sea. And then there's... Those are the top 20, and then there's some top free-to-plays. Again, pointing out League of Maidens. Then Early Access, they're kind of breaking down the same list over and over again, not showing much difference. It does feel like they are still slightly trying to figure out what these blog updates should be but at least they are nicely highlighting the games that are well supported I think controller support is an odd category to use Persona 5 Strikers also being mentioned Although, it would be very hard to justify uh, playing Persona 5 Strikers as, like, your first Persona game. Alright. If I do that, can I do anything else? No. If I do this, though... Alright, that didn't work as well as I'd hoped. So yeah, Persona 5 Strikers is on the fall list. This Cyber Manhunt is not on the fall list, so does highlight something from February 2nd that I totally missed. I don't know if I have any excuse for missing this. I, I definitely don't feel like I ever saw this game. I could see myself dismissing it and not giving it a second thought. However, story-oriented puzzle game. I guess I have to put it on the wish list too. Like, did it meets every requirement. English, Chinese, um, very positive, oh, over 4,000 positive reviews. Unless this is a case of just a massive amount of successful astroturfing. Here we have one called uh, Rogue Heroes, which looks like a Zelda game. And it's from February 23rd that I totally missed. Is this single player playable? Hmm. Uh, again, I think that has to go on the wish list. And do we want to evolve? You're done. You wouldn't. My, my apologies. Thirty XX is early access, so I'll leave that one on. On that case, Valheim is on the fall list, but I I don't know. I don't know if there's enough polish here for an open world survival game. Like at a certain level, Valheim could, with enough polish, replace something like Skyrim uh, in the hearts and minds of many people. 
but it would have to be very, very successful very quick before the next Elder Scrolls game came out. Um, or the next Elder Scrolls game would have to come out and be even buggier than Valheim is. Um, otherwise, I feel like the next Elder Scrolls game, just through momentum and Microsoft owning Bethesda, um, would succeed very easily at defeating any competition. Here we have Curse of the Dead Gods, which is on the fall list. And once again, it's met that requirement, so it might as well just go to the wish list. I'm still not sure about Zombie Army De 4, Dead War. It's very positive, I guess, at a certain level. I don't know what I'm what could really hold me back. Interesting. We all of a sudden now have the ability to remove something from our wish list. That is a feature that's been missing from Steam for years. Uh, instead, it was always this might be also a Steam extension or Chrome extension I have installed, but all of a sudden, being able to directly remove something from your wish list is. It's going to make it so much easier to curate wishlist content now. So yeah, I keep collecting these upcoming card pack tickets. Which definitely makes it feel like there's a new expansion coming out closer than it would seem. So. Yeah, I don't know why they, so they put out this element. Maybe it's just one less effort. As far as missions, we, we need three dragon craft or blood craft victories. So there is more to do today. Uh, let's try dragon craft. Here we have a game called Rhythm Doctor, which I say is a rhythm game. But I'm not exactly sure how you play it. Hmm. I don't think it's something I actually would want to play though. Just because it's a rhythm game. Seems like you're making heartbeats to line up with something. Family. I guess you're looking for a fight. Yeah. I just don't think that there's something here I'd like. Early access, English and Chinese, full audio. Let's trade that, and that, and that. Wow, five, five mana cards on your first draw. The room for old sins, overwhelmingly positive. Does not require um, VR. Interesting, so I can add that to the wish list. But then, I think you're in a weird point where, oh, I guess I guess you just skip over the room VR, a dark matter, which is VR only, and that sucks. But whatever, room four is also right now eight ninety nine, which is a little expensive, but not too expensive. I could see that going on sale and me getting it cheaper. I'm kind of plot committed with the room series of games. I'm through. And it's kind of amazingly obvious how the room series of puzzle games is either being copied by a had. YouTuber who who makes real world puzzle games that are very similar to the room puzzle games or vice versa. It could be that the real world puzzle games are being copied by the room developers. Either one, I suppose, doesn't really matter because, like, the YouTuber I'm thinking of says that these puzzles he's getting are, like, worth $30,000. Of course, they're one of a kind, so you can set any price you want on them, and you can say something is worth something and not actually pay that much easily.
regardless of their actual value, they, them being one of a kind means you would never actually be able to, to play with those puzzles if it weren't for somebody emulating it effectively in a VR experience. Here's a game called Firework, which looks like it is a 2D horror game. It feels Korean or Chinese, and it kind of doesn't look like anything, but it's overwhelmingly positive. Of course, in this case, it doesn't support English, so that's interesting. That might be the first case also of a game on Steam making it into the top seller and it not being from um, it, it just totally not being from a English language game I don't think I can do anything okay And I guess now I'm just going to go down my Twitter feed first and start opening tabs and trying to figure out some way to fix this. Like, there's no way an hour and 22 minutes in I should be done with the news. That's for certain. Because I know there was even other like news articles and things that we haven't talked about. Yeah. So yeah, let's just open everything on my main Twitter feed and then everything else. Elsewise, as far as I can figure out. I'm going to just have to start all over again. I guess. I suppose I could just talk about this news because I don't think that there is really much of an article around it. Um, basically, after Xbox... Uh, Xbox tried to double the price of Xbox Live slash Xbox um, uh, what was it the, the Xbox Premium Pass uh, service uh, that they were basically trying to get rid of the Xbox Gold element and people were very upset about the the huge price increase which um uh, they yeah they at that point promised to make free-to-play games not require an xbox gold account and seemingly in the process of either just ridiculousness or pettiness they they have um they have now started to work on removing Xbox Live as kind of a, um, as kind of a branding name, and it seems now they are just going with the Xbox Network instead to differentiate between whether you have Xbox Live or whether you're just using the Xbox Network. Um, which, I mean, either way, it's not going to really affect people. 
it does just kind of feel like you're uh, they are changing the names for no good reason micro x microsoft's branding and advertisement is has always been particularly awful and it seems like they they have no interest in actually improving it uh, or even worse it is it seems like microsoft and xbox think they they're actually good at branding and advertisement and and that is something as an idea then that they should be broken of because the the first way to fix a problem is to admit that you have a problem <laughs> and i feel like microsoft in particular is not at that step i think that they are deluding themselves heavily into thinking that they they know what they're doing when clearly they don't like the xbox series x in series s is a prime example of of terrible naming conventions the consistent for over 10 10 plus years or pretty much for over the entire lifetime of microsoft being in the video game uh business their consistent inability to attract the japanese market shows a a big problem um, yeah. Let's see. Name we follow is lose one play point and evolve his follower. Clash give negative two. I I can do that. Uh -uh, that won't do. <laughs> Time to turn. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a ton of tabs open now. Like here's a that article. Like Xbox is dropping the Xbox Live service branding in favor of Xbox Network. Uh, the Xbox Live phrase won't completely leave our vocabularies anytime soon, as it's still the name of choice for the Xbox Paid Online membership, Xbox Live Gold. But see, they want to kind of get rid of Xbox Live Gold and push people away from that. So that's that certainly explains why they would focus uh, on not having Xbox Live be used in any other branding. It definitely feels like it is a that is an edict that came from some high up person who who is just a manager and kind of a uh, kind of disassociated with the the on the ground workings of video game stuff somebody that feels like they're being butt hurt more than anything I seem to have lost. there is also um i was listening to a major nelson's podcast and i and uh on top of them um eating some kind of like crunch wraps that are promoing micro uh, xbox stuff that they seem to have a little bit too much time on their hand to play video games which is an odd thing to complain about certainly because uh you kind of would want them to to dog food a little bit and play video games but uh if if major nelson in particular is spending 10 or 20 hours a week playing video games he, he could be probably using his time ben better hmm. Hmm. Let's 
ですよね And still, I'm just scrolling down Twitter feeds to open more tabs. This probably goes to highlight the how much extra work happens in prep. And in all fairness, I I do very little prep work, uh, pre-production type work, compared to what a proper video game news show would do. Of course, it is also worth um, mentioning that as far as the B4, G4, and as far as any other um, any other streaming services or video game sites, there's not anybody that is doing like a daily or even weekly news roundup of that's much better or much more recognizable. There are YouTubers that do it, and and usually they're fairly slow on the news, even compared to me. And and I'm not particularly fast. If if I'm willing to wait, potentially an entire weekend to talk about something. Um. So yeah, you you would like. To ideally see G4 have a nightly news experience talking about video games. Although I don't know if they have much to say on a, on a nightly case. Uh, the only reason I even have so much to say is because there's I'm looking at every single game that comes out. And that's not something that I think a lot of people want to do. Whether it's... The smart thing to do or not is questionable. Hmm. See, draw a card if you have more evolution points than the some of the medical work. May have to take them up on that offer. It's really, really crazy that every tab suspender seems to to conflict with the anti-duplicate tab program, clutter-free. And ideally, what you would do here is you would just have one extension that did both suspended tabs and, uh, and looked for duplicate tabs being open. But... But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm still finding tons of tabs. I know I clicked on a lot of these. At least I think I did. Maybe I fell asleep and dreamed I did. That, I don't think that's the case. Um, well, we can do this. And we can evolve this. And we can hit that. Though I set, I will rise again. Not sure how many of these things I like 
Well, if it came from the 23rd, then clearly I couldn't have talked about it on the 22nd, which would have been Monday. Of course, you do run into the problem of a lot of these Gimetsu listings and other people just retweeting the same thing over and over again. And so we probably will have a decent amount of duplicate content. This is going to take forever, isn't it? I'm going to have to curate, I think, some of the what's on Steam stuff. Otherwise, we are going to see so much stuff. I did also realize that there was, um, there is actually a video game company that runs what's on Steam's Twitter feed, which... I don't think there's any real bias there. It's just probably something to recognize that that there is someone behind the scenes that might have a bit of a bias. Hmm. Okay. Get that. Goodbye. Bring every drop. Medic's orders. And then in that, I guess. I must have faith. Well, the good news, I suppose, is. I could stop playing Shadowverse. And I think that is how this is going to have to go down. Is that we, we are going to just have to have a, a hardcore experiment in just talking about video game news and games that were listed. And basically not use Shadowverse at all. Which at a certain point I, I think there is an argument that I need a different fade away screen I, because coming back and looking at Shadowverse when nothing's happening at Shadowverse is, is kind of silly Let's see so do we want to do this too Probably not a terrible card to do. Card a card, draw a card. How did how are you supposed to play this? Oh, you just have to wait till the tenth turn. Interesting.
Yeah, and there was, it's hard to have anything to say when this kind of stuff happens. You've just got to focus. All right. Finish all cards in your deck that run through your mind. Can only attack of overflow. Bane. Evolve. Interesting. Behold the fists of immortal supremacy. Sundering fists. Okay, well, that did. That did some damage. I shall give birth to a new world. Negative X, negative X to all enemy followers. A couple turns. 12 damage between all followers and the enemy leader. That could also work. But he attacked, and so if he attacked, then that would do enough damage to defeat me. Hmm. Well, it was Bloodcraft or Dragoncraft, so I believe we have this Wrath, Wrath Bloodcraft deck. We should make some usage out of it since we did bother to use temporary gems to get it. Hmm. I'm gonna try and curate of some of this stuff. Okay, I think Time to get started. I've gone back as far as necessary. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see, if Wrath is not activated, you do that one and then that one. Okay, so this should be it at this point. I have a ton of stuff now. ton of tabs. Here we have one called Bearhaven Knights 2, which seems to be kind of a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff for 719 English and Russian. Nothing there. I did try to curate some of this, but not a lot of it. Here we have VR Chinese Garden Tour HD, which, yeah, it looks nice. It looks photorealistic, actually. Seems like somebody just took a bunch of 3D photos and put them. There's a whole bunch of shaking in this video. $1.79, whole bunch of languages, although oddly not Chinese focused on. And oddly, they don't have subtitles in French. Hmm. Play that. And the chilling. Yeah, we have a game called Legacy Bites, which looks like nothing for $1.79. Yeah, I tried to curate some of this. Here we have a game called Endless Fury Blackjack, which looks like nothing for 59 cents. Let's see. Pain and suffering are what I look for. So now if I can't heal this guy, this guy's gonna kill himself. Here we have something called drop shipping. Simulator, which I have no idea what drop shipping even means. Uh, sell the customers by buying products cheaply, earn money by making crypto coin investments. Yeah, drop shipping is probably some euphemism for being a middleman of shipping products for some other companies. Probably very fly by night and 
and I wouldn't be surprised if it is a scam in one or two different ways. That's what I would guess it would be. Going to evolve this guy. That way he'll stay around a little bit longer. Yeah, we have a game called Frog Story, which is just a platforming game of no interest for 59 cents. Yeah, we have a game called Falco Axe, which, if it had a little bit more visual polish to it, and the characters stood stood out from the background and were less repetitive. There might be enough, like hack and slash action here that might make some sense. I didn't even realize you were playing as this character. I thought you were playing as the big-headed girl character. Uh, Ninety-nine cents English, allegedly full audio. Nothing, not enough. Yeah, we have a game called Rolled Up, which actually looks like it might be a decent Super Monkey Ball clone. Um, it's rated very positively. It's early access. That deserves a follow. Yep. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hmm. Evolve, drain, deal one damage, your leader, and deal four damage. If you have at least four play points instead of dealing four damage to enemy, follow gain storm and deal eight damage to all followers. Instead of your opponent's turn, if you leave or took damage in the previous turn, um, save stuff. Yeah, gain health back. Yeah, we have a game called Endurance Labyrinth. That looks like nothing for 84 cents, English only. Yeah, we have one called Crazy Christmas, which looks like it's just an asset flip driving vehicle homicide simulator, $2. One of, one of the things that is interesting about some of the pinball tables is that they they, they started to try to make a almost Marvel Cinematic Universe equivalent because the pinball table taxi brought in characters like Dracula, a a femme fatale called Lola, uh, Nikol, uh, Gorbachev, who they call Gorby, the former president of the USSR, and then Pinbot and Santa Claus. And then Bone Busters makes a reference to Santa Claus in a taxi on its table, visually, just makes that visual reference. And it has the a clown head for a sock hop style uh, restaurant that, where they would deliver food to the cars um, on skates. Um, the, and that clown head clearly looks like it is for um, from the the pinball table cyclone. Where, which had a clown character. Probably could have done a little bit more damage since I have two evolves anyways, but whatever. So, that that's an interesting thought. There is a Dracula pinball table, but I haven't played it yet, and it may not have been the first Dracula pinball table, and I, I question whether there would be a table with a character named Lola, um, and I question if there would, would have been a table with, uh, with Gorbachev in it, but there, there probably was. I know there was a Russian bad guy you were fighting in Firepower too. I think that was the table. 
Here we have a game called Sentimental Trickster. Ya Yaoi Boys Love Gay Visual Novel. Kind of saying the same thing twice there, but all right. I don't know why you put BL instead of just Boys Love, though, if you're going to spell it out. So, yeah, it looks like a visual novel. The anime boys look decent. Uh, 1274 English. No English full audio. I'll put this on the fall list and see if there's a great reception to it. Uh, it seems like it probably wouldn't make it into the top 10, which is what I'm trying to get, is to do top 10 uh, levels of gameplay only. Wow, I'm going to be one short. So if he can do seven damage to me, he wins. When I could have played Corrupting Blood and won, more than likely. Here we have a game called Ground Zero Texas, which looks like it's a full motion video shoot up game. Why did they say this came out in 2021 is questionable, because I bet it didn't actually come out at this time. I'm gonna put this on the fall list. Playing a bunch of light, light gun style old games is questionable to say the least. This is from the same publisher that released Night Trap and Double Switch. So it is basically the same same company. Hmm. Or somebody that got the license to all the same Companies seriously blew that. That was a terrible turn of events. Here we have Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace, which is mixed, which is a shame because this looks to me like a decent effort of a game from Asimode Digital. It's already on the fall list. English full audio. Is this based on the board game and is that the problem that yeah it's based on the board game and if I recall correctly there was some problems with it to get started. Mm. <laughs> problem with the way it's really bad worse than you thought it would ever even be though you were going to give it a lot of leeway due to it being a FF Arkham license Let's forget that there is a multiplayer co-op like other board games. Let's forget the graphics are poor uh, and it's worse than that. How about with an avatar that moves super slow and the space bar run button that makes you move only slightly faster. Bad animations, voice acting from like 2008. Uh, out of combat gameplay, click on objects to interact. I was expecting a pretty average game that I tolerate because of it. I like FF license, but it's this is a bit dire. Yeah. That seems to be a problem. Right. Seems to be a fairly consistent problem too with board games is that you just don't get very good very good translations to digital. I don't know why you would even bother to do that. Next we have a game here called Vaccine Delivery Simulator which is just an asset flip garbage game for $11.04. Full Russian language. This is very possibly the first game I've ever seen that that sells itself as having full Russian only in the language. And then here we have one called uh, save Navali, which this is, I guess, a Russian political uh, troll game for 99 cents. And what's funny about this is I still fully believe, even though this is kind of an anti-Putin game, I fully believe that this is a game that was funded by the Russian government to put money into the pockets of Putin and his oligarch friends. Uh, which isn't to say that the same thing isn't happening in the United States. But, um, 
I don't know. I don't know if there are if there are any US troll games getting listed on Steam. But, but there definitely are oligarchs. Here we have a game called Chronicle of Innsmouth Mountain of Madness. This is one of those HP Lovecraft games. Uh based stories. And doing a point and click adventure around a Lovecraftian story makes a lot more sense than some of the other efforts that have tried to make them 3D. Um, this definitely deserves to be on the follow list. $17.99 English full audio. This would be a great game to potentially play during the Halloween or second Halloween events, which at a certain point I'm not sure if I can maintain the second Halloween concept. Hmm. I didn't realize that did did it to everybody. That was a bad move on my part. Here we have a game uh, called Rough Cuts Night of the Living Dead, which seems to be an interactive film for the Night of the Living Dead movie. Is Night of the Living Dead copyrightable? I th I think it still is, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's in the public domain. We also have Dementia 13 and Attack of the Giant Leeches. Interactive versions of a classic film. Multiple choices pathless. A fun interactive way to experience Night of the Living Dead by George A. Romero. Stay tuned for more Rough Cuts titles. English full audio. I want to put this on the follow list, but I really have to wonder what interactivity can you put in a movie like this it's not like there was a whole bunch of um yeah it seems like what you would really end up doing is just dying a lot <clears> that <throat> there would have to just be no progression bran branches that were Dead ends. Alright, well, let's see. Hit that. Hit that. And. I guess of all that. <laughs> if anything, it would make probably more sense to have some actors just reshoot Night of the Living Dead shot for shot and then add interactive branching paths. Um, that's an interesting idea. It's probably going to get taken down by DMCA. Here we have a game called Crazy Factory, which looks like it's an asset flip in which you just kind of do random things in VR for $5.99. Here we have a game called Machina, Machinica Museum. I don't even know how to pronounce that first word. Seems to be a point and click adventure game with some puzzles. Kind of mist like. $6.79, several languages. That I'll put that on the fall list. I might get to a point where I start just looking for puzzle games like this. Uh, once I start running out of puzzle games that are closer to something like Portal where uh, there's a story and platforming and puzzling. Here we have Allura the Three Realms, which is a match three puzzle game with mermaids. And it, it this basically is just My Little Mermaid the themed. Hmm. Like that. That. 
I think I want to kill that first. Here we have a game called Sanity of Moors, which looks like another HP Lovecraft kind of adventure game. Alright. It doesn't look incredibly well polished. It's 1274 English Bull Audio. I'll put that on the follow list. Now we can start cycling through some things. So Gamatsu has Niantic and Nintendo announced a Pikmin mobile app designed to make walking more fun. This is the first in a series of jointly developed mobile apps. Remember, Nintendo tried to get into the mobile app um, business and didn't particularly succeed well on that. So, I, I imagine they are, they would be excited to to keep on going down that path and trying to to not look like Nintendo had just completely abandoned mobile games, uh, even though they didn't really succeed. I think Nintendo probably knows that they're going to have to have some level of mobile game development always going on, even if it's just a secondary advertisement level of of content that would never really replace okay so I can hit that I can hit that I should have evolved that I can hit that just hit that here we have a game on Steam called Drift Mania, which doesn't look like it's probably enough. Uh, the graphics are a little rough, and then when you're moving fast, it, that kind of gets highlighted more. Yeah, I, I really do think that somebody is trying here to make a drifting game. I, I just don't think that they fully succeeded. Also, it seems like there's pretty much only one uh, track and one character. It's $1.79, 10 achievements that are numbered English and Russian. Um, let's see, what can we do? Hmm. Restore four. Do this. And suffering are what I live for. Do this. Pain and suffering are what I live for. Hmm. Do this. I can evolve and attack. That wouldn't do any difference. Let's see. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout has a limited time Kazuna AI uh, costume available from March 27th to March 29th, according to Gamatsu. Here we have a game on Steam called Inspector Waffles, which seems to be a pixely graphics point click type game Let's see it is 12.99 english and french this could be far too expensive for what it is but it is positive enough to deserve to be on the fall list now that we have a ton of tabs open i i am back to taking two and a half hours to stream let's see let's go back Let's try this discard deck. Sure, that probably won't work. Uh, let's see. Gamatsu has the Final Fantasy XI reboot development officially cancelled. The 2015 announced mobile rebo reboot is no longer um, 
11. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that means... I mean, it would be kind of insane to, to, to suspect that that means that there's actually going to be a... A case of of eleven getting remastered properly on a console, but uh, I kind of wonder that. Mother, father, uh, 2K Games has acquired Hook Bang's game division. This is an Austin-based video games division, which will integrate visual concepts a wholly owned student developer of the NBA 2K franchise. So. Yeah, hopefully they wanted to work on NBA 2K for the rest of their life because that's almost certainly uh, all that's going to happen here with that company. I swear tabs are still disappearing. I disabled that plugin. Do I have two extensions that are anti-duplicate things? I don't think I ever installed two. I I don't know what is going on here. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to bother to try and figure it out. Maybe I... Um, I should figure it out, though. Here we have Battle Royale Craft, which is clearly just a low-effort game for a dollar 79 cents and i seemingly have about 10 more tabs and then that's it and they're all steam tabs so where did all the gamma sutra uh links happen i'm gonna have to go back and look again for a third time today to see if there's something and if i if i do it like that i'm just gonna straight up uh, open the tab and then immediately talk about it because that's the only safe way to do it. Here we have Overcooked All You Can Eat, which is mostly negative, coming out 2023. I wonder um, why it's mostly negative, though. That's interesting. Desperately needs Steam Remote Play to make the game enjoyable. Unfortunately, the game is not. Uh, Playable with a Steam Link or controller. Uh, good if you don't own Overcooked 1 plus 2. Otherwise not worth the big price tag. Good updated graphics online. Multiplayer for Over Overcooked 1. One new content update. Bad loyalty discount of 15% for owners. Um, for old version. No new ideas. Game mechanics. Not, not many new levels. Some of the older game music was replaced and taken away. And takes away the flare. Hmm. So basically they've rebundled it. Which I suppose at a certain point. I don't know if any of the Overcooked games. Um, are. Even something that. That I will have on the fall list. Because I don't think I really wanted to play them. Seriously? Yeah. Searching... Let's see, Team 17. Like, you have Overcooked 2, which... I guess I could open in a new link. And you have Overcooked 1. And those two would be $16 to buy those two. Or you can get the All You Can Eat bundle, which is mostly negative, for $40. Now, there might be a ton of DLC at a certain point. But... I think what I have to do is, since I never really felt like I was going to play this game anyways, put this on the follow list. 
and is that a human? Out. and then make a specific movement here to remove Overcooked 2 from the wish list and remove oh, Overcooked 1 from the wish list which I can now do a lot easier all right Let's see that no more corpses be gone dragon's reign but obstruct me not hit that ladies and gentlemen here we have a game on steam called Liar. And this is another problem that kind of highlights the fact that we have to have been missing some tabs. Is that we have not seen any, like, not, uh, nothing that even feels Japanese at all. Seven dollars, English, Japanese, full audio. I'm gonna put this on the follow list. This could be nothing. You do have, or this could be an attempt at trying to make something, like, alone in the dark. Um, there's questions, I suppose, as to hmm, how far that would go. Foul forces of darkness, foul before my temple. It won't be long now. Hmm. Where the wind blows, a paven storm. Here we have a game called Puzzle Tronics Analog Effect, which I feel like I've seen several of these already. So this is a dollar twenty-five. I'll put it on the followers, but hmm, I definitely saw a game similar to this, and they're recommending it. They're recommending several different games here more like this but I think the recommendations here might be a little bit better than what we've seen in the past when often it would recommend just completely ridiculous things all right Card a card and hmm. let's do this. Do this. And then do this. Hmm. Next, we have just a all Asian visual novel title. I would suspect this is a Chinese visual novel for three fifty nine. Doesn't look terrible. Kind of lacking in a variety of people. It seems like there's only two people. And then we have Princess Tear Part One. We might be close to a bit of a holiday because I know. A new Monster Quest game came out. This has just gibberish, like, or like Thai. I guess Thai. It, this is a Thai game. It, it looks like it is a Princess Maker clone in Thai. Unfortunately, it doesn't support English. Wow, and this might be the first Thai game we've seen on Steam.
go ahead and hit that again. And then do four damage on that. And we'll go ahead and evolve this. Next, we have a game called Night Squad 2 Trials, which just looks like it's player versus player game. Doesn't look terribly animated, just looks dull. Free is a decent price. Of course, this is a trial, I guess, so um, it's a demo, and they made it kind of confusing there. We have the game Paradise Lost. Which I don't believe is based on the book, Paradise Lost, but this looks very, very visually polished. Uh, it's an underground, tagged as a walking simulator, but at $9.89 English full audio. Even if this is a walking simulator, it, it is so visually polished, I'd be willing to give it a chance. It's not asking too much financially. Alright, well, let's hit that. Let's see if that gives them some pause. Then we have Unfolded Camellia Tales, which looks like it's kind of a flatter point and click adventure. Fourteen thirty nine is pretty expensive, but I'll put it on the follow list and see if people like it. Uh, this could also just be a little too low effort, or frankly, it might just be a little too Eastern block. Oh, actually, it's a South Korean character. I was thinking this was Ukrainian uh, style story, but all right, South Korean Ukrainian, about the same. Um, Uh, in some poor poverty story. Um, here we have a game called Presence, which looks like it's a horror game. Yeah, once again, we are running into that situation where horror games, even if they're asset flip horror games, are getting to look so good. And this feels like this is a game that is specifically going to play heavily on audio and make you feel like there's a presence. Um more than actually showing you anything. Hmm. Hmm. This is five ninety nine, bunch of languages. I'll put it on the follow list. Interesting we had a bit of a timeout there, but I don't think that's my network. If anything I say I would say my quality of service and my network has finally gotten fairly tied down. Uh, there is still an occasional point where my cell phone in particular loses signal and it messes up for, um, and I think a lot of that really just has to do with my cell phone, uh, being fairly old. Time to get started. Uh, next we have a game on Steam here called Rolling Hamsters, which... It's an interesting idea for a racing game. I'm not sure if there's enough of a racing game here that'd be interesting. Interested in. $4.49 English only. The, the camera angles seem a little weird. Uh, yeah, this really feels like only one button action. Yeah. For $4.49, I can't, I can't justify buying a game that only works on one button. Honestly, I can't justify buying a game that only works on one button anyways. Uh, this is the kind of game that if there was a giant squishy button in an arcade, maybe then it would make sense to put a quarter in and, and play it, particularly if you were a very young kid and just wanted to smash one button. But in almost every other scenario, that that's a no-go. Here we have The Legend of Heroes Sin no Kisekai 3 RPG. Um, I believe The Legend of Heroes games are 
connected to a longer, bigger running um, JRPG series. Unfortunately, this does not support English. Hmm. Which, that does say something, that a brand new JRPG would come out on Steam even if it didn't support English. That that does imply that it, that the Japanese audience is moving to Steam. Which, they could have gone somewhere else, certainly. There, there are some other storefronts that they could have chosen instead of Steam. Uh, although, probably would have been a mistake. Uh, also, the more Japanese um, communication uh, service line um, apparently was leaking information about Japanese uh, citizens. So, I feel like fairly quickly any games that used line or uh, or um, in some way had a publishing deal or a uh, development deal with line would will stop doing that the um, the mobile game Destiny Child I played originally the global version of that was published by line and eventually shift up chose to get away As from promised. that that deal and, and just run the global version themselves and honestly it was a better uh, a good thing because they they stopped being as greedy slightly less greedy once shift up ran the ran the show themselves here we have a game on steam called echo location which seemingly might be just a flappy bird game where you play as a bat but then it also kind of seems like there might be a little bit more to it than that hmm I guess you're you're having to use the echo location to see insects, mosquitoes to eat them. Hmm. And there's like a life bar and a stamina bar. It's an interesting thought. Three dollars and ninety nine cents English and Japanese. Um, now, arguably in the middle of a pandemic where it's thought that bats were the original carriers of that pandemic virus. It's probably some slightly bad timing, but I mean, what can you do about that if you'd been working on the, this game? You have to get it out at some point. I have like four more tabs, but I can't really promise that because I may have to go back and look again. Although I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe I did cover everything. Here we have a game on Steam called Raspberry Mar Mash. Which looks like a top down twin stick shooter. But it seems to feel like it has a slightly bit more polish than most. I've really rejected a lot of top down twin stick shooters. $14.99, bunch of languages. I'm going to give this one a follow. Like, it still could very easily be just a game that would be too much going on and, and just something that I would never want to play. But uh, I want to try and be as, as fair as possible. Hmm. Let's see. We can play this. And... What am I supposed to pull off here? This. Shutting down. This. Shutting down. Mm -hmm. This. Shutting down. I'm Here yeah, we have a game on Steam called Vampirium, which 
has a lot of videos. I don't know if there's a real RPG game here or if this is just an asset flip game. Hmm. Kind of feels like they're attempting to make a game. But then this is just crazy that there would be a match three element. And then big old dragon. Early access 1349 English only. English full audio. There's enough here to, to look like somebody is actually trying. And it seems like you're going to be playing as this masked vampire. And then there will be some other vampire type characters that you deal with. Alright, well, put that on the follow list and we'll see what happens. That one. Go ahead and evolve that one. Get that one. And that one. Hmm. Here we have a game called Hair of the Dog, which looks like it's a point and click game where you're probably trying to. Find alcohol. It's free. English, Spain, Spanish. Apparently it's a demo for a game called Lucy Dreaming. Which looks like a very different game. Interesting. Well, I guess the idea here would be to put this one on the fall list. If I'm interested in that, then, then come back and potentially play this but since this is free I'll put it on the fall list and see if anybody reviews it All right hmm. evolve to zero well, are you? Hey, check this out. Hmm. Just say the word. that and then I'll go ahead and hit the that and that one and we'll hit that one and hit that one hmm Do we want to play this one? I think we do. <laughs> then we have a game on Steam here called Unblock Me Car, which is just that standard puzzle game. Although, in all fairness, even though this does look like this might be a mobile game port, that they have scaled it up perfectly this looks very nice a dollar 69 is not asking that much for achievements is not a crazy number so yeah i'm gonna put this on the follow list we may have finally found a good example of that one game all right well i think we probably have Slightly less than what we need. Rush. Right, do this. Is an extension of my file the hmm. battlefield. Okay, this one. Oh, I probably could have won there. Uh, I'm sick of being a I If I had hit this and this. Nope, I still won. Alright, good. Then we have Digital Diamond Baseball Volume 9, version 9, which is clearly just a simulated game for $17.99, English only. Right, and unless the new groups grouped a bunch of things, then 
that puts me back at my Twitter feed once again. So I'll see if there's any new news, and then I'll try and keep an eye out to see if there's anything new. It could be that the new plugin that opens tabs in the backgrounds sometimes does not work. But I don't know what, because like, here we have this open critic article, Rocket Lead Sideswipe is a spinoff for built for mobile. I opened several different articles around Rocket League Sideswipe, and yet none of them uh, stayed open. Uh, several mythical mystical archive cards will not be legal in Magic the Gathering's historic format, which more bans to be revealed soon. So, like every time I hear anything about Magic the Gathering, it does seem like I'm happy that they that I'm not playing it. Uh, let's see, Hitman 3 DLC revealed the seven seven deadly sins. So I guess that would be seven targets that Hitman Agent 47 is going to go after. Uh, Gamma Sutra had an article here. If it wants to load. There's an analyst that says Genshin Impact has surpassed one billion on mobile in six months. Which, okay, that's believable. Hmm. The game It Takes Two is either out today or in a couple of days, and I guess that would oddly be one of the first big Western games to even come out this year. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've been trying three different times to have this article. Pinball FX launches for the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, Switch, and PC in 2021. What's funny is, why is it being called Pinball FX when Pinball FX 3 is already out? Um, Pinball FX will introduce Pinball Royale, a new multiplayer action mode to incorporate frantic ban battle royale style gameplay interesting the the thing about pinball fx tables though is they're they're always kind of these like wide body or you you can only see part of the table and that they're always these tables that that zen themselves made or unless it's a licensed table you can see that footage it doesn't look Particularly interesting. Hmm. Let's see. The Pinball FX ser series first launched in 2007 on Live Ar Xbox Live Arcade. Um, they have pinball tables based on Marvel, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, Doom, Williams, Bailey, Family Guy, and more. Hmm. So yeah, it might be an argument to not buy any new tables on Pinball FX3 if the PC version of Pinball FX is getting rebranded rebrand and they're going in a circle, basically, and, and going back to Pinball FX1. Then we have a game here on Steam called Disturbed R.I.P., which is just an asset flip horror game. Now that I look at it, $2.69. Um, English and Russian. And then we have a game here called Snapshot, which is apparently a visual novel where you sort of take pictures free. I don't think there's anything there of interest. I, I'm still scrolling down. The. Well, that's gonna load. ESA put out a video advertisement. It's not worth talking about. Um, this is so ridiculous. I mean, 
if I can't get this to work, at a certain point I am going to have to think think about just using Firefox. And that would be kind of crazy. Although it might not make that much of a difference. Because I probably could find similar extensions for Firefox's Chrome. As just be a lot of extra work hmm. Hmm. Um, I suppose it's worth mentioning Wizards of the Coast put out a wall of text for anti-Asian hate and then they put out a second one for anti-Asian hate. I believe uh, Activision uh, Blizzard also put out a similar wall of text. Uh, I imagine a lot of people will do that. Let's see. While we're here... Ghostwire Tokyo's creative director Ikumi Nakamura is going to set up a new indie studio which um, is interesting I wonder in Japan if you're going to have a hard time being the boss of uh, as a female probably slightly hmm. she left Tango in September of 2019 only months after she'd made the Memorable public debut is Ghostwire Tokyo's creative director. Hmm. Quote, you, you can't make games if you're not healthy, she says. I started wondering whether there wasn't a way for me to make games while feeling better. So she wasn't happy with who she was working for. Um, Among Us accounts and Airship Map are arriving next week, which okay. I don't know if, why you specifically need Among Us accounts, but maybe I guess that disassociates it with Discord, which I think you have to kind of use to play Among Us, right? Tobias Sigorn, or Sigrin, I don't know how you pronounce that, has been appointed the permanent CEO of the payday, de payday developer Starbreeze pretty much immediately after Starbreeze managed to get a publishing deal. Um, Steam has a game here called Undiscovered House, which looks like it might just be a asset flip horror game. I'm having a hard time thinking there's really gameplay here other than just wandering around a creepy house that doesn't look that good compared to something like Gone Home, which I don't know if I really would want to simulate Gone Home a second time in worse conditions. $5.09. Guess I could put it on the fall list. See if people review it. Uh, THQ Nordic has opened a Czech studio called Ashbourne Games to create new strategy RPGs, which... The idea of the Embracer Group through THQ Nordic in creating even more companies is insane. TechRaptor has a review here. The cleaner mashes up John Wick and Super Hot. Super Hot. Let's see. Apparently it's not coming out yet. It's a preview. Not a review. I was wrong about that. So you have like one bullet and running and gunning probably don't actually have one bullet but seems like there is a time slowdown mechanism to say the least um microids has uh astro and ublix slapped them all coming in the fall of 2021 which Western people in the United States don't really know Asterix and Ublex that much. But yeah, it looks like it is just going to be a beat-em-up game. Which that might work. 
but it, it certainly wouldn't work for me since I don't really know Asterix and Ublix that well. Um, so that would be a game that if I was to cover and, and buy, it specifically would be because there is a um, large fandom and uh, general relevancy. Uh, Serious Sam 4 modding launches to celebrate its 20th anniversary, which um, I guess Serious Sam 2 Update 2.90 launches for a 15 year old game. Okay, I, I guess that's something you can do. Uh, Cappy Games has a 10th anniversary retrospective on what Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery means to Cappy, which I don't even know what that game is. I feel like I had seen something like this, but I don't even know if it's out yet or if, if it came out and people just didn't, didn't really review it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and this really is showing that the war tabs even in the second run, they got closed somehow. I don't understand how this worked. How did that happen? What is the sequence of events that happened? Yeah, here's Sega. Um, with their wall of text, which, you know, and unfortunately in the United States, be, uh, before the wall of text could even be put on, made up and put on their Twitter feeds, another, uh, spree shooting happened. So, it, it just is kind of a consistent problem in the United States. And it's a growing problem, probably, also, at the moment. Here we have uh, Amazon sets up a new game development studio in Montreal. I feel like we may have talked about some of this. I might literally be going in circles here. Rec Room raises $100 million, uh, of, uh, at a $1.25 billion valuation. I already talked about that. GameStop closed its fiscal year of 2020 with a net sales decline uh, despite a 191% surge in e-commerce, which... I guess that really highlights that GameStop was very much a physical storefront and selling most of its products physically in stores, not online. And that that is fairly obvious. They they have done a terrible job as far as trying to move people to digital purchasing compared to like Amazon. Uh, let's see. Disbelief is hiring a junior programmer for Chicago, Illinois, uh, for. They worked on things like Gears of Five, Gears Five, Borderlands Three, which you know that pretty much highlights uh, a question as to how much did Gearbox really work on any of the Borderlands games, Gears of War Four and Torn. Um, so yeah, I would not work there unless you wanted a lot of skills in first-person shooting games, which is pretty much any programmer. Here we have a game on Steam called Twilight Town, a cyberpunk day in the life. I kind of like this art style. Uh, it's a visual novel. It's $2.39. It's English only. I clicked on this at least three times. And here we have a game called Farage Fantasia, which is a shoot 'em up game. And it looks kind of like a mobile game. $9.99 English and Japanese. I'm going to have to say no to that. It's far too zoomed in. It's part of the problem. And then we have a game called Rodent People Origins, which 
totally looks like it is just a crazy as it flip garbage game like it's just too weird looking frankly even if there was a really good game here um i would have to say no plus it's vr that's just creepy looking all right This is just getting ridiculous. I'm having to stream, scroll through, no less than four different Twitter feeds to get content. The content is now disappearing. Um, I'm having to do it like three different times because it's a disappearing the good news is I think I've mostly gotten everything hmm. what what I'm thinking happened in the order of events is that I turned off the anti-duplicate extension halfway through the second time I clicked on tabs uh, and opened them. So it was still closing them. That's my only thought. Here we have a Tech Raptor article. A Fortnite mystery at Croft Manor experience arrives in creative mode, which... I guess lets you wander around the Croft Manor. Um, although this isn't particularly recognizable to me, although I, I haven't played any of the old Lower Croft games, so I don't know what Croft Manor looks like anyways. Um, Children of Morta has a roadmap for 2021, announces Family Trials mode. So we're still getting content for Children of Morta. I really want to play that game. And yeah, they seem to be able to create content with no um, interference. The 90s classic, although classic is questionable, uh, word to use, Shadow Man Remastered is coming to PC this April. Yeah, and you can see it can only be remastered so much. Um, honestly, if you can just brighten up the game, um, that will be probably helpful. This is a scene in later in the game where you end up in a prison for a brief time. Uh, but most of the time you are in a hell-like environment. And you're playing as this character. Like this was like a Nintendo 64 game. So that's why it's so polygonal and, and bad. Uh, and even by, by Nintendo 64 games it wasn't particularly well uh, modeled. Also, being a mature rated game on the Nintendo 64 didn't help it, I'm sure. Uh, they, they, Shadow Man needs a remake, if anything, and it's hard to justify making a remake based off of a comic book series video game spinoff that very few people remember. Um, Tech Raptor has an article here. Japanese company takes the day off for the Monster Hunter Rise launch. Which, yeah. More and more, they, the Japanese companies need to force people to take days off. Um, particularly for social isolation. Tech Raptor has the Mo Magic the Gathering Arena mobile iOS preview. Which, yeah. This was my concern is that they were going to have to work very hard to squeeze the massive amount of cards that you can put on the field when playing magic onto a cell phone um but yeah it looks very similar to arena on pc with no major differences just trying to clean up their interface and i imagine they, they will have to constantly struggle to clean up their interface. Um, Bloodborne celebrates six years with a return to Yar Yarnim. So, so, okay. Bloodborne. 
players apparently are are running their own event. It seems like it doesn't, it doesn't seem like Bloodborne raiders are really doing much. Uh, the Steam Game Festival is now called the Steam Next Fest, um, according to Tech Raptor. Which okay, that shortens the the title a little bit. Strange po new Pokemon Go balloons pop up on the map. Which, okay. If anybody's playing Pokemon Go. That mostly just means... I'm going to look at what's on Steam one more time. There's a tower defense game that I don't feel I need to talk about. And then... I'm going to scroll down... Just make sure we've talked about everything. I think I finally fixed the problem, but boy, has today been an annoying stream for for problems popping up. And in all fairness, this is still way better of an experience than what what dealing with my ISP has been, where somebody else creates a problem, and no matter what I try to do to fix it, there is no solution. So. At least I'll be happy for happy that that I was able to fix it. If only we could live in a world with no problems ever. N nobody makes mistakes. Nothing goes wrong. Everything is perfect. Yeah, I think that's that. Hmm. Of course, it might get a little boring if everything went right. The first time. Uh, Twitter gaming. Still. It's kind of crazy. I guess I could talk about that. They don't know what they're doing. And all. Twitter gaming. So yeah, like Twitter gaming here with its pronouns in the um, a corporate thing with its pronouns uh, that they put out, don't ever give up my son, stop crying, it's just a game, the game. And then they ask, what does GG stand for? Wrong answers only. And then it's like the cake is a lie. Like, just terrible, terrible takes. Uh, they don't know what they're doing at all. Uh, particularly on this one, plenty of people could come back and say GG stands for Gamergate instead of Good Game, which is what I assume they were thinking of. Um, so you, you've just kind of opened the door for controversy. Uh, apparently, also, YouTube will test a auto-detect... Uh, feature that would detect products featured in videos and suggest content accordingly. Thus, more ways to advertise things. Um, also, at a certain point, if YouTube is detecting products in a used in a video, then most of those videos are probably sponsored videos, and you might want sponsored links. So this is a great way for Google and YouTube to rip off people who would have sponsored links to products. Um, which I can't say I absolutely love the concept of, um, of people having sponsored videos and advertising products in general. But the idea of YouTube screwing up the little man again is, is ridiculous. Uh, um, plus, if I, say, make a video and it somehow figures out that I have, like, an Amphalon processor, does that mean every single video I ever release is now going to say, I used an Amphalon processor in my computer? I could clearly see for my content, I don't want that. I don't want advertisements on my channel in general, particularly if I'm not making any money from it, like... Uh, in um, 
if if I was getting a fair cut, maybe then it would make more sense. But I don't know if YouTube even understands the concept of giving somebody a fair cut. Um, I guess all of these will reset tomorrow. And there was no new Humble Bundle thing. So I guess that's going to be it for the stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.